Hello, hello. My name is Matt, and this is the Astrologer's Encyclopedia. Thank you so much for joining me, as always. Today, we are going to be talking about Jupiter. Um, and so my plan for the next several months is we're going to do this video on Jupiter, we're going to do one on Saturn, and then we're going to pause the planet videos, because I need to read up, I think, a little bit more on modern astrology uh, before I can do like a really good treatment of the outer three planets. Maybe we can get into some asteroids. Um, and so until then, what we're going to do is I'm going to do a video probably on the triplicity lords of the sect light, which is just a really general timing technique. Um, and then we're going to get into a number of celebrity examples just to um, work through a lot of the different techniques that we've um, been looking at since the start of the channel. We're just going to do simple like delineating planets in houses, planets and signs, and then do some timing to uh, sort of let people see um, how these things can all be put together, how we can predict events, how we can look at people's personalities, their income, their careers, their relationships, um, any topics and uh, timing. So um, as always, if you are enjoying the channel and you want to support it, then I have a Patreon where you can get um, weekly forecasts, monthly forecasts, early videos, uh, bonus content, whatever. Um, I also offer readings if people are interested in that, um, or you can just keep watching and um, engaging with the channel. I really am happy that everyone's here. I'm having uh, a great time doing this and um, I hope you enjoy the video. So. Today, we are going to be talking about Jupiter. Um, and just a table of contents for what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to read from some traditional sources, which, as always, are going to be Valens, Firmicus, Abu Mashar, and Lily. And then we're going to do just a little review of what Jupiter uh, can show, what Jupiter can indicate, uh, and just some things to kind of like get the mind uh, turning. Jupiter in traditional astrology before moving into the modern sources, uh, which for today we have Stephen Forrest, Richard Tarnas, and Ren Butler. Before we uh, quickly review Jupiter in modern astrology um, and sort of wrap up. So we have a few uh, relatively lengthy quotes today, especially from uh, our modern authors. Um, balance today is somewhat thankfully kind of short. Um, usually <laughs> it'll take up like three slides. So balance tells us that the star of Jupiter signifies the begetting of children, childbirth, desire, love, alliances, knowledge, friendship with great men, abundance, payments, large gifts, an abundance of profits, justice, authorities, governments, honors, heads of holy places, arbitration of disputes, trusts, inheritances, brotherhood, fellowship, adoption, confirmation of good things, relief from bad things, release from bonds, freedom, entrustments, wealth, stewardship. So relatively actually short list of significations when we compare it to like Mercury. Um, of the parts of the body, he is Lord of the outer thighs, the feet, for which reason it also produces running in athletic contests. It uh, Internally, it is the Lord of semen, the womb, the liver, parts on the right side of the body. Of substance, he rules tin. He is of diurnal sect, gray and mostly white in color and sweet in taste. I always love the tastes of the planets. Like it really sort of gets you, um, gets your body to like experience something of Jupiter. So as we see already, Jupiter is a benefic planet called the greater benefic. Um, that can be in reference to either he brings greater gifts, some people will say, or just because he's like a superior planet, superior to the sun, uh, like outside of the sun relative to the earth. Um, so we do see that Jupiter's uh, benefic quality is a little bit different than Venus's, where Venus will represent like, um, you know, fine, like clothes or jewelry or adornments. There's this very like um, decorative almost quality uh about Venus and it has to do with like sex, which Jupiter can also bring, but Jupiter can be a little bit more like political. It can uh, relate to things like um, profiting from the courts, governments, uh, be like having authority in a holy place or in government, um, friendship with great men. It's a little bit more, um, and it makes sense with, we think of Jupiter being, uh, having his joy in the 11th versus the fifth, it can be a little bit more um, heady and perhaps like ideological. Um, and there's like children and the beginning of children, but I think it has more to do with like the raising of children um, 
and like the gift of a child, whereas Venus would be like the um, like nursing of a child and the like actual sex act. So um, that would be balance. Uh, Firmicus, I have a couple of things here. I have, again, as always, Jupiter uh, in the first house by day and by night. So he says, if Jupiter is posited partially, so by degree, in the first angle, i.e. in the degree of the ascendant, especially in those signs in which it rejoices, which would be Sagittarius, Pisces, Cancer, uh, either in its own domiciles or in its own terms or in its exaltation, so exactly what I just said, it will make nobles, renowned persons, always in charge of city-states, sometimes members of the first 10 of great city-states. So the first 10 is like a governing uh, council, according to the measure of the nativity. So this is like according to their other techniques, such as triplicity lords of the sect light, which will um, you'll be able to gather like eminence from, from that. Like if the native will have like a, a prominent life or an active life versus one that's kind of destitute. Um, so he will be a good person, charming, benevolent, cheerful, and rich, especially if Jupiter is found by day in the degree of the ascent, and if no malefic star from any degree opposes it, posited thus. For if a malefic star aspects it, posited thus, with a contrary aspect, everything that Jupiter decreed is diminished in the greatest degree. So here we have Jupiter um, in the ascendant in a day chart. So remember, Jupiter is a diurnal planet. So in a day chart, he will be of sect. So he provides things like uh, premier authority and influence in a city-state. Um, a good person, he's charming, benevolent, cheerful, and wealthy, right? So it's just all these good things that Jupiter can bring. Again, similar to imbalance, it's less about like having relationships with others, um, having a spouse, having a marriage, and more about like having influence and being um, like a high status uh, sort of person, right? That would be Jupiter. Jupiter can be like the wealthy person or like the beloved statesman, right? That kind of a thing. Or the the like beloved church leader, right? Um, when he's placed well and of sect. But if it is found in the degree of the ascendant by night, so contrary to sect, it will make him to be the firstborn among his brothers or the one who is born before him dies, or it will separate him from his parents and settle him in remote regions and places so that he himself has the first place in his father's house. In addition, it makes him to be well-nourished and it establishes his parents in the greatest good fortune. But if with Jupiter so disposed by night, a malefic star resists, it will dissipate all the paternal and maternal property. So here we have Jupiter um, like giving good fortune by night, but through misfortune almost, right? It's, it's just less good right so remember in the video about mars we were saying that mars can give good things according to its nature so mars will give good things through conquest through uh warfare through victory through brute strength but you know in doing so it sort of removes the native's ability to connect like tenderly and intimately with others jupiter can give bad things but according to its own nature so it will give uh influence through people dying through like the death of the brothers, right? So he will be the premier inheritor, the premier brother, but it's because he was either removed from his household or because his brothers died, that kind of a thing. Um, and it's also like, you know, being the premier child is a lot uh, uh, less than being the like premier person in a city, right? So it's just like a reduction in the good fortune and it comes sort of with this baggage of like mixed or even bad fortune. And again, we always want to look at, um, is Jupiter being like opposed by malefics? If he is, or we're squared by malefics, especially if it's out of sect. So in a day chart of Jupiter squared by Mars, in a night chart of Jupiter squared or opposed by Saturn, that will um, disrupt Jupiter's uh, ability to do good because of the sort of harsh gaze and beholding of the malefic. So uh, next up we have Abu Mashar. Um, so this is the beginning of the medieval uh, Arab tradition around the 8th, 9th century. He says, uh, and he indicates, and Jupiter indicates the soul which nourishes life, animal bodies, children, the children of children, excuse me, embryos, scholars, legal experts, making judgments between people, acting justly, verification, understanding, sages, the interpretation of dreams, 
sincerity, truth, religion, worship, modesty, piety, reverence, being God-fearing, unification, insight into religion, uprightness, endurance, and such a man will be praised and have a good reputation. And he indicates prosperity, success, defeat for all who resist him, dignity, leadership, authority, kings, the nobles, and the mighty, the greatness of one's good luck, comfort and delight, desire for assets and collecting them as well as exploiting them for profit, riches and the goodness of one's condition in luxury and wealth, and his spirit will be lucky in every matter, and his character good, and it indicates charitable giving, generosity, granting, being open-handed as well as boasting about it, being unrestrained in his soul, sincerity of affection, a love of leadership over the people of cities, and a love of those having important having importance as well as great people and an inclination towards them and assisting the people in things. I think that's supposed to say. So Abu Mashari, he kind of goes on and on, um, but we have just one more slide. And he indicates the love of building and magnificent dwellings filled with people insights into things, fidelity in one's commitments, uh, fulfilling what one is entrusted with, being indulgent, fun, jokes, beauty, adornment, coquettishness, which I think is like um, being like kind of flirty and like coy, uh, joy, laughter, an abundance of speech, eloquence of the tongue, everyone who meets him will delight in him, and he indicates an abundance of sexual intercourse, love of the good and hatred of the evil. Man, I should have <laughs> proofread this. Making peace between people, commanding what is beneficial and forbidding what is detestable. So we see a lot of things here. We see Jupiter uh, being related to uh, things that are true, right? And scholars who are investigating the truth, people who are just and fair um, and like you know, engaged with things that are righteous and moral and uh, scholarly and religious and devout, you know, being God-fearing, pious, modest, um, unifying things, like not causing discord, but instead being like a, a balming um, influence, enduring in uprightness, um, good reputation. So we have just this sort of classic, like upstanding, uh, scholar, someone who's like knowledgeable and truthful and fair and kind, right? That would be sort of this very pure um, Jupiter. We also have someone who's wealthy and authoritative and sort of noble in a way that is um, like regal or kingly, um, which this has somewhat fallen out in modern astrology and we'll see that, but there's a lot of preoccupation with, and it makes sense when you think about like who was doing astrology was the upper classes. Um, so the, like, like the, like the clean orderly, um, like, you know, high and mighty, uh, kingly class, right. Would have been seen as like Jupiter by themselves. Right. It's kind of interesting. And the scholars also, right. Would have been like, oh, we're like Jupiter. Um, but yeah, there's this luxurious quality, this wealthy quality, and this, this like flowing forth quality where it's like Saturn might be someone who sometimes Saturn can grant wealth. It's never, um, it's usually sort of like wealth by proxy where Saturn will be like a landlord or like a steward of someone else's uh, property, but will be like real tight fisted. Um, whereas Jupiter is, uh, I don't know if he said it on this one, the next one, um, but something about like being open-handed and um, like giving and generous, right? That would be Jupiter. Um, has this like social quality as well. So Jupiter is like charming, flirty, but not like, creepy right it's like fun and um endearing right and eloquent and he's delightful and you know he's got this um like magnetism to him like like zeus right um and so he's just this all around like good guy right if taken um very sort of like purely um so next we have lily Lily says that when well-placed, Jupiter is magnanimous, faithful, bashful, aspiring in an honorable way at high matters, in all his actions, a lover of fair dealing, 
desiring to benefit all men, doing glorious things, honorable and religious, of sweet and affable conversation, wonderfully indulgent to his wife and children, reverencing aged men, a great reliever of the poor, just, wise, prudent, thankful, virtuous, so that when you find Jupiter, the significator of any man in a question, or the lord of his ascendant in a nativity, you may judge him qualified as above said. So again, Jupiter is kind, affable, good to have a talk with, good to have a drink with. He's generous. He'll probably buy you a drink. He's like good to children and women, right? Um, when well-placed. When poorly placed, Jupiter is... Uh, so when Jupiter is unfortunate, then he wastes his patrimony, suffers everyone to cozen him, is hypocritically religious, tenacious, and stiff in maintaining false tenets in religion. He is ignorant, careless, nothing delightful in the love of his friends, of a gross, dull capacity, schismatical, abating himself in all companies, crouching and stooping where no necessity is. So this is a sentiment that is implicit in the rest of it, where Jupiter, through um, his wealth and influence, is subject to excess, to hypocrisy, to uh, stiffness in like maintaining his power. And, you know, you have kind of this image of like the politician who's like smiling and shaking your hand, but is, you know, passing policies to um, punish and, you know, hurt working people or something like that. That could be Jupiter, right? This upper class guy with a really clean image and a smile on his face, but is, um, you know, perhaps hypocritical and is um, like all of what Lily has just said. I really like this one also crouching and stooping where no necessity is. Um, it's kind of interesting. You can imagine someone who's like, um, like feigning suffering, right? Where like they don't, they can stand upright, you know, they have plenty of room to stand up. They have plenty of, uh, you know, money to support themselves, but they're like, oh, you know, I need some help. Um, and like, oh, I need to duck and, and hide um, that kind of a thing. So that is the end of the traditional sources. Uh, we have Jupiter as the diurnal benefic, domicile lord of Sagittarius and Pisces, exalted in Cancer, um, nocturnal ruler of the fiery triplicity and cooperating ruler of the airy triplicity and has a joy in the 11th house of good fortune. So um, Jupiter's two signs will trine the signs of the luminaries in the Thema Mundi. Um, so if we have uh, Cancer and Leo being the signs of the luminaries, Pisces will try and Cancer, Sagittarius will try and uh, Leo. And then Jupiter also being exalted in Cancer is really interesting, being exalted in the first house to the ascendant of the Thema Mundi. Excuse me. Um, you know, Jupiter has all these, these uh, qualities of like overflowing and like abundantly sort of discharging, right? So in the sense of like, wealth or power right and it's this giving nature when it comes to those things but also through semen jupiter is like spewing forth the waters of life right in cancer um which is kind of interesting so um jupiter will show things like children joy influential people profit and gain freedom health wealth social bonds delight sex leadership the law religion holy places and agreements between people um, it has this general quality of bringing things together, lifting them up and making them more profitable, more abundant, more um, expansive, more uh, beneficial, right? Um, Jupiter will often represent things like um, patrons or, um, you know, again, politicians, kings that are like beneficial to the people um, and uh, so forth. Jupiter also has this very, hypnotic kind of intoxicating quality that you find um in sort of like the image of the centaur it's this like larger than life figure it's this like overwhelming um like greater than reality sort of image and then also in pisces you have um like you know you think of the power of like wine and um like alcohol to sort of bring joy and bring people together. But, you know, there can be this underlying quality of excess addiction and that kind of a thing. A lot of times if you find Jupiter in the 12th or in the sixth and it's like not maybe in the best sign or if it's like with Mars, like I know I've, I've seen actually a number of charts with Jupiter and Mars in the 12th and it will indicate um, addictions and, and things like that. So Jupiter can also show excess, hypocrisy, arrogance, dullness, indulgence, and wastefulness um, in addition to all of these good qualities. 
So that is Jupiter in uh, traditional astrology. Um, and I'm aware that, it, you know, in these talks, there's not so much like concrete, like delineation of uh, actual charts. And what I really want people to think of <clears throat> is like when you watch this video and then you're like about going out and about in your daily life, like think of things where you might find Jupiter. So you pass like a bar or you pass like a bank, even that can be a symbol of Jupiter or you pass like a stock exchange or even a casino can be um, like a Jupiterian enterprise. Um, or you are hanging out with a friend and like you're laughing and enjoying each other's company that can be Jupiter is like present in the room. You think of like um, a religious book or a church that can be Jupiter as well. Um, so it can be really just like a really fruitful exercise to like, as you're going about in your daily life, just think of like, okay, this experience I'm having right now, like which planets might be present in it, this object that's in front of me, which planet might be present in it. Um, that kind of thing, this book that I'm reading, the show that I'm watching, look at the characters and, and think of like, is this like a mercurial person or is this a Jupiterian person or, or so on and so forth. Um, so, and that can just kind of like get the mind spinning so that when you do come back and look at a chart, you have more um, flexible and sort of like self-generated and probably like culturally relevant interpretations. Whereas if we read these things from like Lily, um, he'll go through all these, I didn't write them here, but he'll go through all of these like uh, occupations and professions from his time that may or may not be relevant. Um, whereas today, if you're looking around and you're like walking through your city, then you can see, um, you know, different buildings or different areas and different people doing things that would be more relevant to someone that you're doing a reading for today. Um, so with that being said, we have now some modern sources. So first we have Stephen Forrest, Stephen Forrest. This is from the inner sky, um, from 1984, I think. Um, his function is the maintenance of faith, the development of vitality and confidence, and the lifting of spirits. The dysfunction is overextension, over optimism, pomposity, pretense, and the denial of negative realities. I really like this last one. Um, I, I, but I have a very malefic chart, and a, a lot of my astrologer friends have very malefic charts. And we always kind of joke that sometimes people with either just like heavily benefic charts or even just with like benefic risings can have this quality of um, avoiding problems. Like there will be a problem sometimes like right in front of Jupiter's face and he's like, eh, no, it's actually an opportunity. And it's like, no, like you, you know, have cancer or something. You know, it's like um, There can be this really, uh, you know, denial is a river in Egypt kind of a thing. Um so key questions, what kinds of experience will help me feel more faith in myself and in life? Where might I be taking too much for granted? So we can see already that there is a little bit of a shift here. Um, and as always, this is not a negative thing. I do have some problems with Stephen Forrest, um, but it's not a bad thing that modern astrology is what it is. It's a like narrowing of the focus of astrology to be much more internal. And there's a decided push against materiality. And we see this because Jupiter is no longer in Stephen Forrest relevant any way really to um, material gain, except maybe as a negative. Um, whereas if we go back to like Abu Mashar, he's just going on and on and on about how, um, you know, comfort and delight, assets and collecting them, exploiting them for profit, riches, goodness of condition and luxury and wealth. Um, that kind of thing. He's just going on and on and on. It's kings, it's wealthy people, it's the upper class, it's the aristocracy, it's you know that kind of a thing. For Stephen Forrest, it's all about an internal state of like faith, security, confidence, um, safety, right? Trust in life, trust in in your abilities, that kind of a thing. That's a very Jupiter sort of state of being. Um, and there's like this feeling of when you're safe, you can like grow and and feel mobile and feel like you can do things whereas maybe saturn in modern astrology with this feeling of anxiety about things being limited and not having enough and so there's this like shrinking down um and again it's not a bad thing i don't disagree with really any of this um, it's just an interesting kind of um uh, focusing on certain things rather than others right so he goes on to say one word encapsulates jupiter faith Above all else, this is the planet of faith, not faith in the sense of I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, not anything so formal, but rather something much more primal, a faith in life, an unshakable certainty that life is worth living. 
10 days of rain, then the sun emerges. Our Jupiter circuits are buzzing. And this phrase right here, like our Jupiter circuits, is also very um, emblematic of modern astrology where things are much more focused on like, um, rather than Jupiter being like, I don't know, like a really nice car or something like a limo. It could be like a Jupiter thing. It's more, it's like a state of being, right? Rather than like a um, events and things in life, right? So our Jupiter circuits are buzzing. When Jupiter plays a major role in a man or woman's psychic structure, we typically see a high spirited person, an individual who moves with the natural elegance of a true aristocrat. So we can easily draw ties there to Lily or Abu Mishar or Balance, right? There is magnanimity, expansiveness, a contempt for pettiness and pickiness. Always there is an indefinable element of the Jupiter person, something bigger than life. We are in the presence of a star. Unfortunately, the person may know that. And he goes on. I didn't want to put like the entire chapter in, but he goes on to say then that like the downside of Jupiter can be that it's this arrogant, pompous, um, like holier than thou kind of a person. He says later on in the chapter, traditional astrologers call Jupiter the quote, greater benefic. They love him, but they do not see him very clearly. They are right when they say that Jupiter makes us feel good. What they, off, what they so often fail to see is that he may lead us down the garden path. Kings and fools, such a thin line separates the two and Jupiter balances between them, uncertain as a toss coin. So I agree with this sentiment. However, I really want to push back on this idea that like, traditional astrologers were simplistic and one-sided in their delineations. A lot of times when we read the like lists of qualities, so like in balance, you know, he has a point. It's a lot of positive things, right? Relief from bad things, release from bonds, freedom, and trust as well, stewardship. But all these things are kind of conditional where this would be like Jupiter in Pisces in the first house in a day chart with a trine from Venus and a, you know what I mean? And like Kazemi, like it would be really kind of hard to get all of these good things from Jupiter all at once. And we see in Firmicus that there is this conditionality where if, again, if Jupiter's in a day chart, it will make nobles, renowned persons, um, and they'll be wealthy. If there's no malefics present, if the malefics are square or opposite, these things will be diminished greatly. Jupiter will have a harder time bringing them forth. If we have Jupiter in a night chart, then yeah, he gets good things, but it's from his brother's dying. He's now the premier brother. But if the malefics are present, then the maternal and paternal property is destroyed, that kind of a thing. So um, I do, I really enjoyed Stephen Forrest's book. I really agree with a lot of what he said, but I think that there's this idea that especially like 20th century modern astrology had that the tradition was, that we had like evolved past it and we're like not deterministic anymore. And we're like going to focus on the spiritual and we're like not going to be, um, so straightforward and like simple in our delineations. And I just think it's really uh, this like false superiority that pervades pretty much all of modern thought. And it's this idea that like traditional people were superstitious and like kind of stupid and that we've, um, we're more intelligent, right? Because of, we have the wonders of science and we, you know, that kind of a thing and modern civilization, right? So again, I don't disagree. I just want to push back against that notion. Um, so next we have Richard Tarnas um, says that Jupiter is the principle of expansion, magnitude, growth, elevation, superiority, the capacity and impulse to enlarge and grow, to ascend and progress, to improve and magnify, to incorporate that which is external, to make greater wholes, to inflate, to experience success, honor, advancement, plenitude, ab abundance, prodigality, excess, surfeit. I actually don't know what surfeit means. Um, the capacity of inclination for the capacity or inclination for magnanimity, optimism, enthusiasm, exuberance, joy, joviality, liberality, breadth of experience, philosophical or cultural aspiration, comprehensiveness and largeness of vision, pride, arrogance, aggrandizement, extravagance, fecundity, which is like um, fertility and like generation of offspring like a, a fertile person um fortune and providence zeus the king of the olympian gods so this is um i just always love richard tarnas it's always like 
has all these just like really great descriptive words. And it brings together a lot of things that we've uh, been talking about for this whole time. So making things into greater wholes, bringing things together where you think of like mercury, its opposite is using the mind or speech to kind of pull things apart just to see how it works, right? Whereas Jupiter would be like the television set, Mercury would be like the screws of the television set and the little wires and stuff that make it function. Um, Jupiter can inflate things, make them larger, make them successful, make them uh, expansive, make them um, experience joy and enthusiasm, but they can be aggrandizing, they can be arrogant, they can be prideful, they can be extravagant um, and uh, so on and so forth. You know, I always think of like the only thing um, like if something grows too far, then it's cancer, right? It's a cancer cell um, or it's capitalism. Um, Ren Butler, we have uh, impulses. So he has like a positive and a negative. We have impulses toward growth and expansion, optimism and generosity, tolerance and acceptance of others, broadened experience and integration into larger wholes. And then the uh, like negative sides of it would be tendencies towards inflation and excess, pride and arrogance, self-righteousness, and a sense of entitlement. The Jupiter archetype, excuse me, manifests through our impulses to grow, reach out and expand our range of experience, to embrace wider perspectives and to integrate ourselves into more inclusive wholes. Study, travel, and deep self-exploration are some of the satisfying ways to meet these needs and broaden our horizons. This archetype also underlies feelings of optimism, joy, and well-being, our sense of adequate resources, and our impulses to generously share with our fellow human beings. Jupiter represents those forces that seek to elevate, amplify, and make things bigger, leading us to pursue success and accomplishment in whatever areas of life we consider important. Spiritually, and I, I really like this quote. I think it it um, really uh, emphasizes what I was talking about earlier, where Jupiter moves from being um, like a principle of, or like an image of success and wealth in what can be like a very straightforward material sense, material sense, to that being um, like an aspect of Jupiter, but like not the one that we're really striving for in modern astrology. It, I think it. Uh, that current of like what we're really searching for is like spiritual um, consciousness or something is is very uh, present in modern astrology and not always in the tradition. Again, not a bad thing, just uh, a difference. It says spiritually, Jupiter suggests our impulses to move closer to or become more like what we consider to be true and right. It is behind our sense of the divine as being better than ourselves, as superior and existing on a higher level and is having the capacity to uplift, improve, and make us whole. Jupiter's expansive nature seeks to draw our awareness back toward an identification with the larger universe and a more inclusive understanding of our cosmic status within it. Partial or unintegrated contact with Jupiter's expansive energy can also lead to the less salutary traits of arrogance, inflation, and excess. Material ambition is a kind of horizontal or lateral expression of Jupiter, while the heart of this archetype is toward an expansion of consciousness toward the universal mind and all things within it. So I just think that's a really, really interesting um, idea, right? That is somewhat present, but it's it's really not in, in the rest of the tradition. This idea that the point of astrology is like necessarily and like fundamentally uh, this spiritual elevation. I just, I don't think it's true, but I really, um, for me, right. I see why people do this and I, it's very intriguing to me. Um, but it's just definitely something to really, really take note of in the difference between modern and traditional astrology is that modern astrology is very interior and is very much focused on spiritual development. Whereas traditional astrology is much more about describing the life of the native in, um, not even all in, 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 in a more material sense and also in a spiritual sense, it can do both, but it is a lot more interested than modern astrology in the material. Um, and it sees like material wealth as a good thing, whereas uh, modern astrology doesn't necessarily, right? It's an, it's an incomplete or partial integration of Jupiter. It's a horizontal expression rather than a vertical, which from the tone of this passage, I think means better, right? Um, so just interesting to know. I don't necessarily, again, same thing with Stephen Forrest. I don't necessarily disagree. Um, I just think it's worth 
like really thinking about it, like what what is it that we're trying to do with astrology? I think a lot of modern astrology just takes this idea that we have to use it for this sort of spiritual progression uh, really for granted. It's really like embedded in the whole thinking. Um, and again, not necessarily wrong, but probably a good thing to really examine and think about as we're going forward. Um, and like the implications of that kind of thinking for someone who maybe isn't too interested in that or someone who is like trying their best and still having bad uh, or, you know, unpleasant life events um, and the language around like integration and like progression and ascension and um, that kind of a thing, higher levels, right? It, it's just worth uh, pondering. So Jupiter in modern astrology um, will show a native's ability to trust in life, their confidence, their desire to grow spiritually or materially, uh, to become connected with others, give to others, experience joy, and have religious uh, or spiritual uh, experiences. The downsides to Jupiter are largely the same as in Lily. We have arrogance, entitlement, hypocrisy, self-aggrandizement, um, etc. Jupiter in modern times seems much more concerned with religion and spirituality than in the past. Uh, it is present, right? If we go back all the way to Abu Mashar, we have, um, you know, seekers of truth. We have um, uh, scholars. We have understanding. We have sages, interpretation of dreams, um, religion, worship, modesty, piety, God-fearingness. It's, it's very, very present. Um, but again, as always, modern astrology tends to kind of take one or two things from the tradition and really um, draw them out and focus on them. Um, so the associations with political influence and material wealth have dropped away or are seen as um, like a more shallow or incomplete uh, or like, you know, materialistic and in that sense, like lesser expression of Jupiter. Um, and again, not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it's something that I, I, think it's taken for granted uh, quite frequently. So that is going to be the end of our talk on Jupiter today. Uh, we have pretty much the same work cited uh, as we've had for all of these planet episodes. We have Hellenistic Astrology, uh, Study of Fate and Fortune, Firmicus Maternus Mathesis. Uh, Chris Brennan is where I got um, Valens from. He lists Valens significations for the planets. Firmicus, uh, it's book three, chapter something. Um, it's in book three, these lists of planets and houses. It's really good to read through because you get to see like Saturn in the second in a day chart versus Saturn in the second in a night chart. It'll be like Saturn in the second in a day chart is like a landlord or someone who is like a steward of someone else's property or an accountant or something like that. And Saturn in the second in a night chart is like um, living in the gutter and like, you know, dies at three years old. Like it can be very, very extreme. Um, Charles Obert's The Classical Seven Planets, Source Text and Meanings is where I got Lily and um, Abu Mashar from. Stephen Forrest, The Inner Sky. I really do like this book. Um, Richard Tarnas, Cosmos and Psyche, Rem Butler, The Archetypal Universe. And then there's two astrology podcast episodes that I think are worth listening to. We have episode 64, The Significations of the Seven Traditional Planets, and episode 319, Jupiter in Astrology, Meanings and Significations. So thank you again so much for um, watching my video. Again, if you want to support the channel, uh, if you really want to help out, you can either just keep watching, follow me on Twitter at the underscore Astropedia, or you can uh, come on over to Patreon. We've got some really great benefits. We've got um, you know more people there than last month, uh, which I'm super happy about. Or you can come by a reading. Uh, I do offer readings um, for natal charts, and I'm working on getting a little horror business going. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.